Quakers make consensus uh-huh. collective decisions uh-huh. because they knew that they needed a place to lobby to, for people to stay when they lobbied at Capitol Hill. There are uh, Quaker services every morning, and you should go to at least one because it is about. Uh, you sit in silence until someone is moved to say something, and sometimes you could sit all the entire service in silence, and no one says anything. So this is a house with a great activist tradition, and it's a perfectly fitting place for us to stay. some things so that we can later abuse that and it was just little by little encroaching on on this uh, so it was just a really interesting layout of how something that started off as like well we can't all agree on anything else but we can agree on treaties turned into like encroaching on the rights and then removing Indians from, or sorry, I don't know what to call them, sorry, but Native Americans from. That was amazing. Aurelio and I are anthropologists, but anthropologists of our own people. We feel and we practice these things. We are not a group that just observes. I thought in relation to global, that was kind of an interesting quote. Because we all have cultures that we observe and critique and look at, and that way we're anthropologists of our own culture, but we also try to look at other cultures and understand them. But for like these people, like this couple, it was interesting because it was like through their observations and being that, they're representing like themselves as a group and being their own representations of their uh, people. I thought that was like an interesting way of looking at things. I think it's a representation of how colonization like basically had wiped out so much of indigenous knowledge. And like for a lot of the artifacts that like, I saw, like dated back just to like maybe like, the 1800s, like that was like the furthest one I saw. And I think that that is also a representation of how because it was like totally wiped out, 